welcome to Mimi's Kitchen. Well, it's a beautiful fall day and the time of year when everybody just kind of relaxes and we know that um, our weather's going to be changing. And so that's okay. You know, it's, it's just one of the, the facts of life. Well, we have been getting ready for Thanksgiving and it is fast approaching. Um, I can hardly believe that it's just a week and a half away. And so you better get your ducks in a row now, or at least find your ducks. Today we are going to be making carrot cake. And if you have my cookbook, Sunday Lunch at Mimi's, turn to page 72. And you can follow along if you would like. The instructions are there. And this carrot cake is going to be just a little bit different maybe from any you've, um, I don't know whether you've made it before or that you've eaten it before. But it's it's very good. It's just made a little different way. And so we will just get right to it. So let's put the book over here. The first thing we do is we have a cup and a half of sugar. Put that in our mixing bowl. And then we have four eggs. And like I told you, I use Eggland's Best and I use the extra large egg. I just like the way it bakes up and the way that it looks when I crack it. All right. Put those together, let them get acquainted with one another here. And um, the instructions say to cream those together. So we'll have to just let those go for a minute and uh, get really mixed up together. And we will start with our other ingredients. Now, the reason I said this is a little different, I make mine with baby food. And I think the way that happened, one time I was going to make a carrot cake and didn't have any carrots. And I thought, oh my goodness, we can't make it without carrots. And then I, it must have been when one of my children was little because I had baby food. And I thought, well, I'm going to try baby food. Well, it worked. And that's the way I've been making it ever since. And so um, it just makes it very moist. And so, all right. The next thing that we're going to start adding is our flour. And for this, you use self-rising flour. So let's see if we can. And what we're going to do, we're going to alternate our self-rising flour. Let's put one in there. With our oil. And this is just vegetable oil a cup and a half. It's on that side. Don't mm -hmm. ask me why they make these things backwards. So we'll just let it pour a little bit in there. Let that mix up together. Oh yeah. It's doing good. All right. Another. Like that, kind of All right, I'm right back. My phone was ringing, so I had to answer that. All right, I'm gonna put the rest of that oil in there. And then you end with flour. So, put the flour in there. Now we're gonna let that mix up good and then we're going to add <clears throat> we're going to add our baby food I'll cut that off so it doesn't throw this baby food on me because you know how that how that goes and this comes when when you buy this baby food it looks it looks like that and it has two containers in it I'm using three I don't use the fourth one because it really makes it a little too soupy. But it comes like a two pack and there's two four ounce containers in each package. So you need three four ounce containers. So let's 
pour this baby food in here. Let's see if we can get it out of here. Try to get all of it. Y'all, this is so good. And you can make this. I'm going to tell you. You girls going to surprise all your families. Because now you've had several recipes here that are very easy. Go back and look at that broccoli casserole. That's a good one to take for Thanksgiving. The green bean casserole. The sweet potatoes. And now we've got carrot cake. And so let's see here. We'll go ahead and put our cinnamon and our vanilla in right now. So we'll put the cinnamon first. It's a teaspoon of cinnamon. A very generous teaspoon. And a teaspoon of vanilla. <laughs> that mix up there and get acquainted really well with one another. Oh, it smells good. You know when we make the pumpkin bread, um, I think a lot of you have made that and you know how good that smells. Well, anytime you have cinnamon, it really um, gives you such a wonderful fall smell. So, we're going to let that mix up now. You don't have to mix this stuff very long. Just long enough for it all to get together. And so, see, see kind of how you think that is maybe too soupy, but it's not. So we're going to let's see, just clean these off. And now I have already greased my my three pans. Now I use the nine inch layer pans. You can use eight inch. It really does it really does not matter. And then you can also make this in a bunt cake. But now you'd have to cook it longer. And you know I guess we ought to preheat our oven here to three hundred and fifty degrees. Not thinking about that this morning. And this is Saturday morning. I'm getting this ready for lunch tomorrow. Our Sunday lunch. This will be one of our desserts. I don't know. I'll have another one. I usually have two desserts on Sunday. And um, just because I like dessert. Okay, so now as soon as our oven preheats, we'll put these in the oven I'll show you putting them in, and then we let them cook for about 15 minutes because um, they're not real thick, and we'll check them, and then we'll take them out. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay. All right, now I'm ready to put them in. Look, sorry, I'm just a little disorganized today, <laughs> but um, we'll get these ready and put them in the oven. And I know everybody's going to ask, and I'm just going to tell you right now. Everybody says, why do you put your stuff on the bottom rack? Well, I'm going to tell you why I put it on the bottom rack. Because I always have. <laughs> There's no particular reason. And I don't know, when I first started cooking, when I put stuff in the oven, I just put it on the bottom rack. Now, my rack doesn't sit flat down on the bottom. It's about that far above the element in the bottom. Of the, so I'm not flat on the bottom. But there's no special reason. 
And the good thing about putting stuff on the bottom rack is if you're cooking other things, then you can add them in your oven. But if you put that rack in the middle, you don't have much space to work with. And so it does allow me to use my oven for several things at one time. But even if I'm using just one thing, I put it on the bottom. So that's that. <laughs> so, all right. Now, when these come out, um, we will show you when they come out. I'm going to set my timer here for 15 minutes. And let's see, because these layers are not real um, thick. All right, now, I, this uh, particular cake calls for cream cheese icing. And so what I've done is I've gone ahead and set my cream cheese out and my stick of butter, <laughs> and that will be for our icing. But what we'll have to do is now when these come out, they have to cool. And so um, we'll just take it as it comes. So we'll be right back in about 15 minutes. Okay, our 15 minutes is up, so let's check our layers here and see how they are doing. And I can tell you, they, even though that comes out clean, I'm going to cook them for two more minutes. I just like for the... Let's do three. I like for the top to be just a little bit browner because I don't want them to fall apart when I start putting the icing on them. So I'm just gonna let them cook just a few more minutes just to be sure they're good to set. So three minutes and we'll be back. Okay, our three minutes is up. Now see, you can kind of tell the difference See, you want it to look that nice golden brown. So we're gonna put these over here on the cooling rack. Ooh, y'all, they smell good. Mm -hmm. hmm. Ooh. Okay. Now, you let them cool in the pan. You don't flip them out. You'll have a mess if you do. So you just let them cool in the pan. So we just go leave them here. And later on, we'll start putting this thing together. We'll make our icing, which is our cream cheese icing, and, um, and then get this together and let you see what it looks like. So you saw how easy it was to make those layers. And if you cook it all, or you don't cook at all, you can make this. It's just very simple. Follow those instructions in the cookbook or what you saw on the video if you don't have the book. You can make yourself some notes and just put your ingredients down and then just follow it step by step. Stick them in the oven, cook them, and then we're gonna put the icing on them after a while and oh, your family will be so impressed. I'm just trying to help y'all, uh, all, especially all you young cooks that don't usually take anything um, notable to, to your Thanksgiving gathering for you to surprise everybody this year. So um, we'll be back and, and we'll make the cream cheese icing and we'll get this put together. So see you in just a little bit. They have got to be completely cool, I'll tell you that, because when you start putting this cream cheese icing on them, if they're warm at all, the icing is going to melt and get kind of runny. So be sure that your layers are completely um, cooled. Now, I've already put my cream cheese and my stick of butter in here. Now, today is one of those days where you can't turn the heat on in the house because it gets too hot just have to kind of leave it like it is. So these did not get as soft as they need to be to make this icing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick them in the microwave for just about 30 seconds. So it gets that softness that we need. So let's put them in there. I don't want to melt that butter. So 
it, it'll be just enough to get them nice and soft. And so once they get that, then we can start working with them. I'll have to tell you something funny while that's happening. In between all this, I went to, to buy my groceries. Today's Saturday, we try to get ahead of ourselves here. And we'll, you'll see this on Monday, but it gets dark so early that we're having to kind of change the time that we make our our video. But anyway, I, I went grocery shopping. So I, I go to two or three stores because I like this here, that there, that there, you know. So I went to Walmart last and I got my, most of my canned goods and my dry goods and all that. So I got to put everything in the car, park my buggy, get in. And I started backing up and all of a sudden I thought I had hit a, hit a car or a buggy or something. And um, so I kind of pulled forward a little bit and I looked, well, I hadn't hit anything because I, I, there wasn't even a car next to me. So I backed out again and popped. This thing went pop. Well, I jumped out. I thought, Lord, what in the world? Well, a can of my green beans evidently had rolled out when I was putting my stuff in the in the back of the car. Well, there's a nice big pile of green beans right there in the Walmart parking lot. Now I would say, I do keep paper towels in my car and I tried to get some of them up, but that was a sight. So then guess what? Then I had to run back in Walmart and get another can of green beans because I'm making the green bean casserole for tomorrow. <laughs> so that was a little disaster. Okay. Now, all right. See how, see how soft that made that? get those mixed well together. Let them get acquainted with one another. All right, and then the recipe calls for four cups of powdered sugar. So that's one. You should just dump it in there, but we go measure it today. Two. Now we have to start this whole kind of slow, otherwise we'll end up with a powder sugar face. So let them start mixing down in there with the rest of that stuff. And we will be right back. See that it kind of sticks in there? Mm -hmm. See under there? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm gonna tell you, I like just a little bit more icing. So I don't want to do, do like another whole thing of cream cheese, another thing of butter. So I'm gonna put a little bit of milk. Now I'm not gonna put much. I pour this in here. That's about a fourth of a cup. Okay, now I am going to add another cup of powdered sugar. That just gives me a little bit more icing to work with. the same flavor. It does not change the flavor at all. It just helps you to make a little bit more icing so that you don't run short. Okay. 
Okay, that's nice and smooth. And you see, you've got just about the same consistency that we had before. So it just helps you to have a little bit more icing without doubling the recipe. Okay, so now we're gonna come over here. And this is where our layers are. All right, I've already put my first layer on here. And what I do is I put my layers upside down. That way, this part that I'm working with will not um, show the, will not crumb so bad. You know, sometimes when you're doing it and you, you look and you've got so many crumbs, and so we're just gonna go right on. We're gonna ice this bottom layer all the way around. Now, like I told y'all before, I am not a cake decorator. But we have seemed to manage all these years <laughs> with the way I put the icing on this cake. I have, have yet to have a complaint about it. So, must be okay. Main thing is the, the flavor. So, I'm not going for like some decorative finish. layers. See, this one kind of has like a little hump on it. Well, this one looks more flat. So I think what we'll do is we'll take this and we'll use it for our next layer. Now, we could kind of trim that off if we wanted to, but since this one is flatter, that's not necessary. So we'll just kind of Go with it like it is. Okay, we paused for just a minute because you probably want me to just sit there and watch me spread icing on these layers. Now, this one I'm going to put with that side up because that'll make the cake fit better. So, here we go. Okay. Just kind of take that down around the side. communicating too well um and I don't read lips very well and she's trying to tell me all this stuff and I'm like uh what okay so anyway so we're about finished here mm -mm. now Just take your knife and just kind of swirl it around a little bit. Y'all, that's not beautiful, but it's, it's edible. And see, we needed that little bit of extra icing. Otherwise, you your icing would be kind of skippy. I would tell you one thing. If you make this in your... Um, when you start spreading your frosting, if it's icing, if it's a little bit too thin, just put your little bit more powdered sugar in it. Because if you don't, then those layers are going to slide <laughs> and you'll end up with the leaning tower pizza cake. <laughs> but there is a trick that you can do. If you make this cake and it's a little bit warm 
and you're having that trouble, get you some of those wooden skewers like you do vegetables on and then cut them. Don't do a toothpick because it's not long enough. Do those wooden skewers and put about four in there. Now you'll have to cut them to match the height of your cake and that will keep your cake upright. And, and I'm sure you have eaten cake somewhere and you were the lucky person that got the, either the toothpick or the wooden skewer. And so it's just a little trick you can do to keep your cake standing straight up if it, if it wants to lean. And occasionally if your layers are not even, if your oven didn't cook them even, you may end up with that problem. So sometimes you can't get it all balanced out. So just stick them together. Now, I did want to tell you one thing. I told you about my son getting his new heart, and um, it was such a blessing. Oh my goodness, we are still just marveling over the sequence of events and how everything happened and how the Lord blessed him. So, I would have to tell you something cute. One of his friends um, sent him a message and said, you know, Ken, your favorite expression is, watch this. And usually when Ken said, watch this, he did something very unusual, like jumping off the roof of the dock or running and jumping over the banister of the dock or just all kind of crazy stuff. He just always like, watch this. She said, I'm sure that when God gave you that heart as quick as he did, God said, Ken, watch this. And I thought, you know, that is just so true. Because God is just that way. He just gives us things sometimes in, not sometimes, but all the time in his time. And so whatever that time is, we are grateful for. So I want to tell you, he's doing good. He has gone back for his first checkup to Charlotte. And it was nearly perfect. And so he goes back again this coming week. He'll go every week for a month. And then it will start alternating. And so this Thanksgiving, we won't be able to celebrate in the same house, but we certainly will be celebrating Thanksgiving. And when we go around the room to ask people what they're thankful for, if he was part of it, he would certainly say, my new heart. So I hope you have a good rest of the day and start thinking up now about the things you could do for Thanksgiving. Surprise your family and show up with something unusual and you don't have to take the rolls and the paper goods this year. You can, you can take an actual dish. And so we've done some very simple things. And next week we're going to do a very simple salad. And it will give you something that, that you can take and you can be proud of. And everybody said, wow, when did she learn to do that? So everybody, you know, has those moments. So everybody have a good day. Have a good week. And everybody shine for Jesus.